GoPro is an incredible tool for any filmmaker. The portability and high quality video makes them ideal for getting shots that would otherwise be very hard to get with a normal mirrorless camera. Now what people have yet to realize is that GoPros have a dedicated photo tab. So how good is it for stills? To get good pictures, we need to understand what we're playing with. So the GoPro is capable of 12 megapixel RAW images. So because we're shooting in RAW, we are stuck with the full sensor wide setting. Now GoPro says that it has a full frame equivalent of 16 millimeters, but in my testing, I found out that it was much wider than that. The GoPro lens is also known for that fisheye look. Now luckily for us, Lightroom actually has a distortion correction setting for GoPro. Now when we apply the distortion correction, we get a rectilinear look, which looks very similar to my Sony 10 to 18, which is also rectilinear. Now by doing this correction, we actually lose things in the corners, but because the image is so wide, this didn't bug me too much. The GoPro also has a lens that has an aperture of f2.8, but because of the crop factor of the GoPro and the lens that is super wide, there is no bokeh, and everything will always be in focus. This is how GoPro can get away with using no autofocus motor on their cameras. Now this does have its drawback that you can't use the minimum focus distance to get a blurry background. With a normal wide angle lens, if you focus on an object close enough, you can still get a blurry background despite the fact that the lens is so wide. But with a GoPro, you can't do that. Now I found that because the GoPro had such a wide lens, its ideal place to be used was landscape photography. When doing landscapes, you aren't focusing on the blurry background and instead you fully rely on composition. Now the problem with that is that the screen was a bit too small for me to get my composition right. Many times I had to just guess and hope that the composition was okay. Another problem was the shutter button. You see, the button is kind of mushy and hard to press. It was designed that way so that if you're doing sports, the camera wouldn't accidentally stop recording. So for video, this is ideal, but for photography, this is a nightmare. Something nice with the GoPro is that the camera is weather sealed. Now this won't stop the raindrops from hitting your lens, and the screen is so small that by the time you notice there was a raindrop on the lens, it's too late. I also find that the lens was a bit too wide for my taste, even with the distortion correction. There is a point in which wide is too wide, and for me, this was it. I found myself being bugged with many problems on the GoPro when it came for stills. Many of those wouldn't be an issue if I were to be shooting with my normal mirrorless camera, or even my phone. Let's say that you have a very basic cell phone camera like I have. Then likely, the cell phone camera has a 24mm equivalent lens. That focal length is really common among cell phones and its focal length is much more usable compared to the ultra-wide of the GoPro. The screen on your cell phone is also much bigger too, and there's a rule of third grid to help you with composition. Cell phones are known for good dynamic range with their HDR features, and there's an actual focusing motor so that you can get a bit of blurry background by focusing really close to a subject. Here I'm talking about a very basic phone camera, but if you had a more modern phone, the extra features and option would blow a GoPro out of the water. If you really need an ultra-wide shot and you're in a pinch, a GoPro could give you good results. But except for that, a mirrorless camera or even your phone are easier to use and will give you better results. I'm not saying that GoPros are terrible cameras. Their video features and portability make them ideal for high quality action shots. But even if there's a dedicated photo mode on the camera, you can tell that the camera was not designed to take stills.